Hello once more, welcome back to the shop. It's Tool Cane, and this is tips number 429. It's another toolbox tour. A good chance to turn it off now if this bores you, but uh, if you do like it, go back and watch tips 420, which was also a toolbox tour entitled What's in Tubal Cane's Drawer? So this is What's in Tubal Cane's Drawers number two. My dear wife gave me this Remline top and bottom machinist chest for anniversary present. It must be 25 years ago, so I've had it quite a while. She went to the factory store, which was up in Yorkville, not too far from here, and picked this up. And uh, I thank her for it. But I don't believe I've ever gone through this one. And it's a nice extra wide one with the, the big drawer in the middle here. So let's go through this drawer by drawer and see what I got. I had to move this away from the wall. Normally it sits underneath the uh, taps over here and, and various other things so that I cannot get the lid open. And I built that shelf specifically at that height. So there's nothing in the top of this and there isn't anything in the top of most of mine simply because they become a catch-all. In fact, it took me about 15 minutes to clean the top of this off so that I could present this video. So let's start over here with, with this drawer. Don't expect anything greater or any uh, uh, real revelations, but nevertheless, uh, this should get this voyeurism out of your system. I had to laugh because as I rolled this away from the wall, I ran into a few items. I thought, well, this would be a good, uh, good chance to clean up back here, but it wasn't much back there other than this can of potted meat, and I don't know why that's there, but it must be left from when I was making oil cans, and it's still unopened. I wouldn't eat that if it was the last meal on earth, but I think I'll open it up and set it out for Smokey, who is always hungry, and I hope that doesn't poison him. Not much in this drawer. You know, I need to go to some more auctions, but these are those parallel clamps that I made in one of the videos long, long time ago. So, not much there. And this one is just an assortment of some of the oddball Joe blocks and uh, stacking uh, racks that I've got here. These are, uh, again, from that great West Clocks. Uh, auction that I went to, but some of the more common sizes here, and some blocks, nice units, seldom used. And in the third one here, don't get your hopes up, but there's that nice set of brown and dull uh, adjustable parallels. That's the only complete set that I have. It goes all the way up to two and a quarter. I don't like the plastic case at all, but uh, it, these lock into place, whereas those old Starrett ones have such tiny screws and uh, they don't lock properly. Here's my pretty much complete selection of Starrett and Brown and Sharp uh, automatic center punches. You've seen these in the videos. I did a video on that. So Some still in the box. That's that extra large one, the 770. Never have used it, but there it is for the day that I might need it. Of course this center drawer is designed for the machinery handbook, but that's in one of my other toolboxes. So in here I keep that machinery practical guide, and really this is the same thing. It's just a newer version of it. And I love this black book. You've seen that in a lot of my videos. That's really quite a book. Get yourself one if you don't have one. For all of you hoarders that are watching, I think you know that sometimes you lose track of where you have kept things and it's just a search going through all these drawers because I have, what, five or six Kennedy boxes and some out in the garage as well. But in here I keep some of my smaller taps all the way down to number threes. And that's where I keep my, you know, 12s are kind of hard to find. So somebody sent those to me and I got them here along with my P38, you know, odds and ends that why, why is that drill bushing in there? I have no idea. And I painted these all red, and I have no idea why I did that. But that's not really where the taps are. There's the mother load up in the plastic drawers, taps and dies. I hope you find this semi-interesting, because I do myself. It's a good review 
for me where some of these things are but here's a drawer that has those smaller tap wrenches some of these were homemade that I used in a video if you recall but there's that cute little sterret still in the box and the nickel plated one I made remember that video that might have only been last year I don't know over here is uh, the world's smallest torque wrench from West Clocks remember that and what do I, oh, there's more 1224. All of a sudden I'm coming across a lot of 1224. You know, 12, that's a different size there. 12 is 3 8 is a very nice size because it's between 10, which is 3 16 and quarter. That's really quite a gap, and sometimes you need a thread that's in between those two sizes. And here's just some assorted, I don't know why they're in here, but... You know, I have to look in three or four places when I when I need an odd tap. But most of my taps that I use commonly in model making are in this little set up here, along with the clearance drill and the tap drill size. Make yourself a set of those if you don't already have them. In this drawer, some of my dies, I call them button dies, these are all the one inch, some of them are hex. And then some quite small ones there, and I think these all came from West Clocks, and I never have used one of them. And there's a diamond in the rough. And these are primarily re-threading dies here on that side, and an adapter. That one's not been used uh, recently. There's a cobweb in there, and even the cobweb is ancient. These we call acorn dies. That's that nice set of brown and sharp uh, scribers and all of that. Those actually should go in that other drawer. There's the wigglers that I made in a video and uh, a full box of quarter 28 taps. Old enough to where they used wood as separators and a box that has those nice little metal, metal corners that I like. A lot of empty space here. I got to buy some more things or reorganize. You know, I'm like you. I just have a lot of micrometers, and here are some of them, the ones that I, I just. It's a nice way to keep them separated so they don't bang and all that because I've got micrometers all over the shop, as do, as do you, and it's just so nice to have dedicated ones that you, so you can leave one on virtually every machine. Every lathe, I should say. We well, got sterrets. Those are all pretty common. There's one of those blade type and the ball type for tubing. Another blade. And just a common two incher. Nothing extraordinary, but a nice selection nevertheless. You can never have too many micrometers, although half the time I use calipers. Here's another miscellaneous drawer. Over on this side, a uh, steric protractor, extra long, narrow rule. No name on that. There's a little sign bar, brown and sharp straight edges from, you know, the world's greatest watch factory. This Fowler thing here, my brother gave me, it's electronic, I don't really like it. It's, it's a depth gauge, it's falling apart as I pull it out of here. Actually it is designed, I believe, to check the depth of tire treads. That's why you're seeing the crisscross mark there, but he, was just, he said it's a good depth gauge, but I don't agree. Oh, someone asked me, does my brother have a channel? Not only doesn't my brother have a channel, he has uh, no computer, no computer skills, and no, no channel at all. He's, he's never even watched any of my videos. He lives out in Cody, as you know. There's a neat little four-fold Stanley Rule. That's an old one. It's damaged. It's damaged. Forgot that I had that. And here's some of my thread measuring tools, uh, thread micrometer and gauges 
thread wires, OV gauge, and so on that you've seen in the videos. Here's a nice deep drawer. Sometimes forget, as I said, what's in here. There's that nice procunier tapping head. That appears, all of this stuff's been in videos. Different uh, tap holders. Love this geometric die set, along with some uh, spare chasers. And you've seen me, this all came from my buddies Tom and Vic up in that uh, brown, brown and sharp screw machine shop. There's a stare at precision level. And here's a, a big one in a metal case, felt in the bottom. That's a nice one. Got the little cross level right here. Yeah. Never have used it. And here's some odds and ends down here that you've seen in my what is it videos. And that's about it for that drawer. And in the lower roll around section here, a lot of very nice spanner wrenches, face spanners, all different sizes. And every once in a while I have to plow through here and try to find one. I think there's some duplicates in here, but some pretty nice uh, tools. Hard to find those, and believe it or not, those are quite expensive if you had to buy an Armstrong or a Williams. Over here, this is graphite plates. Do you remember when AVE gave me these? And I experimented with these in... Uh, some of my rust removal videos. So I had contact with AVE, oh boy, a long, long time ago. That might be the last time I talked to him, but I'm not sure. And I think you all watch his videos, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, he doesn't go by another name. I don't know what his real name is. And there's some felt that somebody sent me for wipers. And I did make wipers out of it. You can see the V's that are missing. This drawer is a waste of time. In fact, it's my filing cabinet for projects I'm working on or have worked on. And, uh, correspondence, stuff like that. Every once in a while I go through there and find something I need. Here's a half-empty drawer, but I used to collect these rulers. I don't know what I was thinking of. Got all kinds of Stanley and Lufkin. There's one I paid $17.50 for, probably at a antique mall, I don't, I'm not sure. And a couple planes. I used to have hundreds and hundreds of woodworking planes, but eh, I, I kind of lost interest is what happened. I'll have to tell the story again. There was a man that had the world's greatest Winchester collection. He had every conceivable model, experimental ones, hundreds and hundreds of Winchesters. And then finally one day, after the collection was pretty much complete, he had a major nervous breakdown. It took him months and months to recover from it. He went to see a doc, and he said, Doc, Doc, help me, what can I do? And the doc said, well, there's really only one thing you can do. Get rid of all those doggone Winchesters and start over. Start collecting Remingtons, because the search is the whole fun. Once you got the collection, then what do you got? You got nothing. Not much in this drawer. My buddy Russ gave me this set of Starrett mics. Not too long ago, you've seen them. One, two, three, and four inch. He had uncles, maybe I told a story, unmarried uncle, bachelor men in Chicago, and they, they drove these old Cadillacs uh, because they had rental property. Their entire income was based on rental property, property but many, many... Uh, People didn't have money, didn't pay their rent, and they would trade or barter things like this for that month's rent. And Russ has many neat guns that were acquired in that way from his uncles. Uh, Remington Derringer, classic guns, uh, uh, Colt guns, um, 
uh, let's see, uh, and a German Luger, all from rent money. And here we have a nice height gauge, and that's a Sheer Tomiko. Haven't used it once since I bought it at a tool show, and an overpriced snap-on 3H drive torque wrench that I use every now and then, but not so much anymore. Well, just how many magnetic base indicator holders does one need? There's a couple up here, too. And some over on the machines. Well, I've got Sterrett. I've got Lufkin. Lufkin Mighty Might. Those are neat little ones. And uh, import there. And, and here's the... You remember those when I was working on those. Not too terribly long ago. And there's my surf tester. And in this corner, some drip boilers. But now since I've got that Noga, I don't hardly use any of those other ones. And there's the mother load of indicators. About every kind and style that you can imagine. You've seen them. You've seen me use them. I got a lot of last word indicators and then there's a, there's more indicators over on the other side of the shop but you're right how many do I need it's crazy it's crazy and last but certainly not least well what are all these meters doing in a machine shop but these came from garage sales and uh, you know I I still really like the analog type gauge like that Simpson meter there that somebody gave me and I've got some of the amp probe that uh, open to check amperage plenty of leads you can never have enough leads I mean quality leads I don't mean those cheap ones from Radio Shack I mean the, the silicone wire that are soft and supple five dollars I paid for that craftsman at a garage sale and I got more outside in the garage but how often do I use a meter well that pretty much completes this toolbox tour what's in Tubalcane's drawer hope you liked it be sure and watch the other one as well as my hundreds of other videos thanks for watching this is Tubalcane saying so long for now and I'll see you in my next video I hope